Hi guys, I have to say I'm way more productive in working on my printer and all these accessories rather than to taking videos, but finally another one is here. I hope you'll enjoy it. For those who are not aware of it, Innova has already been released a few weeks ago, so you can now download a complete 3D model of it. You can go through the bill of materials and start to think about building yours. I also spent a lot of time with the testing the printer, pushing it to the limits and printing many and many objects. Here are some of the printouts I did on my printer and I'm really happy that it prints really consistently. Today I'd like to present you the printer operation while printing in detail. It means from the printer and job preparation through the printing itself towards the post-processing. Printer preparation is an easy task. You have to clean the optics and to be sure that you have enough space in your overpowder bin. We will print today's print out of the PA12 nylon, which is actually the 70 to 30 percent ratio mix. You don't have to think about any parameters like temperatures, recoating speed, uh, energy density, etc. Everything is adjusted and prepared for you in the print profile. But if you want, you can change any single number in the print profile and to play with it according to your needs. It means that you can test new materials really easily. Let's look at the job preparation. After the printer will boot, this is the main menu which you will see. Because we want to print something today, uh, we have to go into the jobs menu, which is here. And actually in there you can see the list of my recent prints. But we want to create a new one, so let's click the create new job. Choose job type, actually there are two types, standard and profiling. Uh, profiling is the name for the job where we are testing new profiles, therefore profiling. Uh, I mean profiles for the print materials. Let's select some name of the job. So it can be YouTube, YouTube job. And here we are, we have a new job. Now we can see here that we have to fix highlighted issues where highlighted issue is that we have to select the print profile which means actually the material we want to print and this is formaps PA12 so let's choose this one and this is it after that we can see the available depth because other parameters from the print profile which are affecting the available depth are loaded and the next step is to add objects we want to print. Currently, we are supporting three most popular formats for transferring your models into the printer. It means the stereolithography, objects and 3D manufacturing formats. Simply say your 3D models on the USB stick or you can use Wi-Fi or LAN or whatever you want to load it uh, into the printer. So we have to go into the objects tab, add new object and we can select here for example this uh, blade holder parts which are actually parts from the Innova. Uh, we can say okay we want to have five instances of each. So let's place them. You can see these are now randomly placed into the chamber and this will be in this state until we will nest them uh, which we can make as simple as this and that's it. And now we can add another object. So add new object and we can add for example Benchy. I would say Benchy would be nice. So 3D Benchy is here. Open Benchy. You can see it here. You can see him here. And we want to say okay we, we want to have uh, 10 instances of Benchy. And that's it. Once you are happy with the, all the parameters you set to your parts, you have to nest them into the chamber. This operation can took from 10 of seconds to 2 to 3 minutes, depending on how complicated your parts are and how many of those are in the chamber. Taking into account that all of these things are calculated on the Raspberry Pi, I don't think it's a bad result. You can see this is a real-time nesting, so it means how it really takes. You can see the time. And here is our job nicely nested. If you want to know the pack density, so it's here, it's 29% nearly, and job depth is 67 millimeters out of the 185. So we got plenty of space in our uh, chamber. So we can add another object. 
uh, that will be uh, the cube in cube. I did specifically for this video and for presentation purposes. You want to have 10 of these here. Start nesting. And after a couple of whiles, we will have our job ready. Yes. And here you can see the 10 boxes we added into this job, actually how they occurred in the chamber after the nesting. Since printer is acting as a server, you can connect to it using Wi-Fi or through Ethernet and to do all the operation remotely from your laptop as well. There's another thing we want to say, for example, print Benji in 45 degree position because it's the best for the printing it out. So we will just select Benji in here and go into attributes and add new constraint. And now we can move with the Benji in the position we want. Uh, sorry. <laughs> here you can see it's 50 two degrees by my hand so we can change it to 45 precisely and we can also allow NEO which means that uh, this is not the only one position in which it can be placed in the chamber but uh, it can be in all these positions you can see now which makes sense so go back into the objects and let's nest it Okay, and our job is now ready to print. It means it has 26%. You can see it's not so optimal like before because we uh, told to the algorithms that not all the positions of benches are allowed, so it's not so efficient. But it will be printed in the best quality uh, it can. Once we have all the parts nicely nested in the chamber according to our needs, we can start the printing procedure. It will ask you whether you really want to go to the print wizard, just to accept it. And now we are in the slicing feature. You can see how the whole job is being sliced right now. Here is a number of layers done of 920 in total. So it will be done in a couple of seconds. So we have our job sliced. Uh, we can check whether everything was okay using this slider on the side. Here you can see uh, slices, how these are going one by one for each layer. If you need uh, to move it precisely, you can just use these arrows to go layer by layer. So we can move from the slicing feature uh, towards the printing wizard. It starts with the homing and motor check to be sure that all the Z1 and Z2 motors as well as the Ricota 1 are working properly. So if you will tap it, the printing procedure will start immediately. First of all, Recoder will start its homing procedure and afterwards both beds will follow. So printer is now homed to zero positions. When it's done, we can load the powder into the printer. Printer will tell you how much powder it actually needs for your particular job. You can see here that the total amount is 4.4 liters and we will need the particular amounts for uh, different phases of the print job. We can start adding powder right now. So now you can see how the powder chamber is going down. It will go down just for say 50 millimeters and we can add first part of the powder. And once you fill this 50 millimeters, you will just click once more at the powder and it will go down for another 50 millimeters, like so.
And finally, we have to repeat it once more. Now it's important to press the powder a bit to compact it. And here's the final portion of the powder. Just compact it again a bit. And now to flatten the surface. It is an automatic procedure to make a perfect bed surface. Step one. And the final step two. Once printer is full of powder and print bed is nice and smooth, another preprinting steps can be done. The last step of the print wizard is the halogen heater check, uh, because you don't want to start your printing with any potential defects of the halogen heating. This would definitely lead toward the printing failure. So let's start the check. And here we are, let's start the print. And voila, it will move us to the main printer status page where you can get all the print related and the print status related information. Print itself consists of four phases. Heating of the printer, bed preparation, printing, and finally the cooling to avoid warpage and shrinkage of the parts. You can see that we are actually in the first phase. It means the preheating of the printer. It will took us 45 minutes. Uh, here is the rough estimate of the print duration, but it will be precise during the print. If you want to see what's going on inside the printer, just tap here. And you see that the halogen heaters are slowly heating the surface. You don't want to do this so quickly. So there is a gradient like, I think, 10 degrees Celsius per minute. Since the bed preparation is just about lying down empty layers to have even temp distribution before the sintering, I will now move directly into the print phase. So last bed prep layer before us. And finally, sintering starts. You can see the particular cross sections of our parts to be sintered layer by layer until the end. As the print is progressing, you can see how the cross section areas are becoming bigger and bigger. If you want to see it live, just tap here and you will see the inside of the printer via webcam. We are doing infill first and outlines afterwards for some reasons, but if you wish to change the strategy, that's no problem. Before I will move to the next part of this video, let's see how long does it take to center one layer in real time. And I'm back. Print job is now done and more importantly cool enough to be removed from the printer. The cooling process normally takes 30 to 50% of the sintering time. In our case it was something about 4 hours. I just like to stress out that removing parts too early will definitely cause problems with the mechanical properties, dimensions and so on. We will hide this notice by tapping it. It will allow us to eject the cake. Let's look what we've got here. We can now open the printer. I am using this simple 3D printed tool to remove the print cake from the printer without any mess. Tapping the eject the print cake will let it go directly into the screw. Cake looks tasty, so we can move to the post-processing. This can be quite messy task, but no worries, I will show you how to avoid it. At the beginning, I used just two plastic boxes and a flower sieve. It worked well and was simple to use. The first box was used for the removing the parts from the print cake 
and for cleaning them using the nylon brush. Although the nylon PL12 is non-toxic, it's a good practice to protect yourself by wearing mask and the gloves. I guess you got plenty of these from the corona times. The second one was used for sieving the powder, which allows it to be recycled. I simply make a hole in the lid of the box using my Dremel tool. Then I put there the common flower sieve with the 100 microns mesh. Later, I decided to design something more sophisticated to make all the post-processing tasks even easier. And this is it, my EPP, which means Easy Post-Process Station. Parts the powdering, printer cleaning and the powder recyclation is now more than easy and comfortable. I will make a separate video to show you how I made it and how it works. But let's go back to our print. And the funny part starts. Now we have to dig the parts out from the print cake. I personally like the satin porous finish of the SLS printed part. If you feel it the same, the last post process operation is to clean your parts using compressed air. And here is the first half of our prints. These parts were actually just brushed and cleaned by air. Here you can see the blade holder from the Innova. This is its back part. Everything is nice and crisp. Here is Benchy. CTD, XYZ, everything's nice, crisp and readable. SLS for all boxes. And so on and so on. The other option is the media blasting. You will get best results by using Glassbeads media. I use the media with diameter of approximately 250 microns. 4 mm nozzle and 3 to 4 bars of the air pressure. And here is a direct comparison with sandblasted parts. Again, blade holder, you can see that it's a bit crisper and finish is glossier. Same with the Benchy. And so on, and so on, and so on. Until everything is here. So, this is actually what we printed within this video. And that's it for today. As you saw, the SLS printing process is not significantly more complicated as compared to FDM or SLA, it's just different. You can believe me that if you will have proper use case for SLS, you will definitely love it. See you next time.